Hey guys, what's up? So if some of you guys remember correctly, a long time ago, pretty much about a year, I posted this on my Instagram page. And I was supposed to be putting in this brand new vintage speed muffler into my Vanagon. We hit a few speed bumps with the project and it was unable to actually install the muffler into the van with the existing exhaust system that I had. But to start this project off right, we gotta head back in time to one year ago when we tried to put that muffler into the car. Well, for some time now, I have been having a rattle in my exhaust, and today, we're gonna fix that problem. Ever since I got back from my first trip to North Carolina with a car, it's been having like this really bad rattling noise, and at first, I thought it was the catalytic converter. But after changing the catalytic and spending all that money on a new one, I uh, found out that it wasn't the catalytic, it was actually just the muffler. I contacted a company called Vintage Speed, and they assured me that the muffler that they sell would fit on either a 2.1 or a 1.9 liter exhaust system. I wanted to buy their muffler specifically because their products are really made well. I have their system on the split bus, and it still looks new after five years of pretty hard use. I'm thinking that the inside has corroded away and that the welds that are holding the actual muffler material inside there have just gone away and it's just rattling inside. It's not too big of a deal. I'll just undo this one bolt in the middle. I assume that I'm gonna have to reuse this bracket here, take off these three bolts and separate it and pull it out. I think I should be able to slide it out that way. Since I had just replaced the catalytic not too long ago, the bolts securing it to the muffler were relatively easy to take off. Usually these things are rusted together and are a headache to remove. The new muffler was a lot nicer than the old one, but it was also a little bit longer. I felt like this could be an issue, but I decided that the company would have tested it before telling me it worked, right? All of the hardware was also included with the exhaust, but the lack of instructions was a little bit surprising, especially since putting this thing together isn't as straightforward as it seems. Ready? <laughs> Looks like it's a bit larger than, than the bracket. Yeah, I hope that I didn't have to buy some sort of specific mounting hardware. Probably did. Uh, consult the internet. Well, after going on the internet and doing a little bit of research, I don't think it will work with my 1.9 liter muffler hanger. So I actually have to go online and go get a muffler hanger, maybe from Go Westy that sells the replacement ones to put 2.1 liter muffler hangers on a 1.9 liter motor, which although this is a 2.2 liter Go Westy motor, it was built off of a 1.9 liter block and that muffler that just came off was from a 1.9 liter. So it only had one exhaust strap on it, which apparently the two strap system that was used on the 2.1 liter is much better anyway, but it's just kind of a pain that they didn't tell me that when I was ordering the muffler. It's not a big deal though. I think that the 2.1 liter saddles are a little bit larger in diameter. And that's really the problem that I'm having here is that the muffler is a little bit larger than the 1.9 liter muffler that was in here before. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and order those brackets and uh, I'll get back to you guys when they arrive. The brackets arrived from Go Westy and while trying to install them, I realized that the muffler just wouldn't work. On top of being a little bit too wide, the length that I had mentioned before was an issue. I might have been able to squeeze the muffler on by taking off the catalytic, but as I said before, I want my emission system. I bought a used 1.9 liter muffler instead of trying to figure out how to make this new one fit. I also didn't want to spend any more money on getting this muffler to work at the moment. After a bit more research, I found that the 2.1 liter header system had a longer mid-pipe, allowing the muffler and catalytic to just sit a little bit more to the driver's side. This meant that to make my new muffler fit, I would have to buy a 2.1 liter header system. And I wasn't even 100% sure that that would fit on my engine without even more modifications. But a year later and I got tired of seeing that muffler sitting unused in my garage and decided that it was time to try again. I ordered the complete 2.1 liter header system from Vintage Speed. So 
So one of the first things I'm noticing is that there's no bung for the O2 sensor on the mid pipe, which is kind of a problem because I do plan on running a complete emission system on this car. And if you don't plug in an O2 sensor, you end up running the car full rich all the time and it ends up destroying the catalytic. There is a bung on the catalytic converter itself, but I just don't really know that moving the O2 sensor won't do anything. Everything came apart pretty easily, but I did end up having to cut one of the header pipes to get the system out. The new one has a flange in the center, so putting it back won't be a problem. I did end up using the plug in the cat to secure the O2 sensor. I would really like to have one installed on the original location in the mid pipe, but for now, I think this will be alright. To my surprise, there were no more mishaps, but getting the new header to fit next to the water pump housing did require me to pull the studs out of the exhaust port on the head and put in bolts instead. Well, even though it took a year finally to get the system in, it was worth it because it looks and works fantastic. I've definitely added some horsepower and the engine responds better and runs smoother now that it's not so restricted. After driving the van for a few weeks, I can safely say that the van is a lot more fun to drive. Under heavy acceleration, it sounds more powerful and deeper than it did before, and at cruising speeds, the noise level has actually dropped. There's absolutely no drone at high speeds either. Got an exhaust now that looks, sounds, and performs better than ever. Hopefully that's the last mechanical thing that I'll have to fix on the van for a while because I'd really like to focus on making the interior of the van more fun. So having said that, let's see what just arrived in the mail today. This will actually be the first thing that I bought specifically for the van that isn't a part that needed replacing. I bought a seat poncho and a cartera from a place called Venture Libre. I've been following them on Instagram for a really long time and I've always wanted to get something of theirs for the van and they really do make some really cool storage solutions specifically designed for the Vanagon. Um, I'll leave a link to all their stuff down below like their Instagram and their website so you can check them out. Also I want to make it clear that this stuff is not sponsored whatsoever. I bought this stuff with my own money and I just think that it's really cool and I wanted to share it with you all. So let's get this stuff opened up and thrown onto the van. Alright so we're in the van now. Um, don't mind the mess with the cushion and everything. The whole back hatch has tools and stuff on it. But yeah, so let's uh, let's get this stuff open. First of all, we got a cool little sticker, which I like very much. That should go somewhere like on the fridge. All right, uh, first up we have the Westy Cartera, which means wallet in Spanish. The first thing I notice is the beautiful smell coming from this. It smells like leather, <laughs> like really nice tanned leather. Very nice. Almost has the smell of like a, a really good wallet, <laughs> which I guess is what they were going for with this, right? So it's got this Velcro stuff here. Okay, I think that it just slides on pretty much. And I guess the Velcro is just there to make it a little tighter if you want it. All right. Well, let's install it. From what it looks like, this is the inside and it kind of goes like this, which makes sense because then the Velcro straps won't be seen. They'll be like over here. And it also makes sense because your cards will then be facing up when you uh, put them in. So I think first of all, I'm gonna undo this. Pull this forward a little bit. Kind of slide them on here. I don't want to bend anything. 
All right. All right, make sure it's nice and tight. All right. Well, let's see if I can hold it. I think we're good. Very nice. All right, well, first of all, uh, it fits well. It fits really nicely. Looks great. You can have like a little map in here. You got some pockets for pens. Cards and stuff in here. In fact, I think that I'm gonna use it. Free day pass to the Florida State Parks. I think I won this actually with the split bus in a car show. Put it right in here, look at that. So now I get my free day pass. Right where I can get to it. And it doesn't look like this will fall at all. Seems good. All right, let's move on to installing the seat poncho. Some of you guys out there might notice that I only have one seat poncho here, and uh, you'd be correct. I actually ordered one a few months ago and really loved it. I put it into the van and it was fantastic and I was kind of debating on whether or not I should buy two of them at once because I didn't think one would fit on my driver's seat with the inverter on the back because as you'll see in a second, these actually have pockets on the back where you can put stuff in them. And I thought, well, I mean, I really like them uh, mostly because of their storage capabilities and with that inverter there, I just didn't think that I would be able to put anything in the back of the seat without it smacking into the inverter. But uh, then I put it on the passenger seat and while I was looking at it, I was like, hey, well, this would probably actually fit even with the inverter on the back. So this is actually the second seat poncho that I bought. The first one is currently installed already on the passenger seat of the car. But yeah, let's, uh, let's unpack this. All right, another great product. It's handmade. Uh, it feels handmade, like someone actually took their time to make this. Uh, it just looks like a quality product. They offer two different styles of this one. One of them has more of a gray accent for like uh, newer Vanagon interiors. And this one, the one that I have, is the more of kind of a browner accent. They all have really nice colors and I think that they probably match either way just because they're so vibrant. And I think that it'll really add a lot of color to the interior of the van and just make it more fun to be in. Before we can get this on the driver's seat, let's uh, show you putting on the passenger seat first because I actually did film that. There you go, three well-crafted, handmade goods that really make the inside of the van look a lot better, in my opinion. So yeah, this stuff was uh, A plus to me. Really glad that I did this and uh, really looking forward to buying more stuff from their company. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a like. If you wanna see more of this stuff, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.